five, four, three, two, one. This is views in paradise. Welcome, any and all, to Views in Paradox, episode 22. Today we will be talking about the film September's of Shiraz with our guest actor, Poria Rabar. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And this is a very special episode today because this is my co-host Rochelle Racine's birthday episode. So... Happy birthday, Rochelle. Mm-hmm. And Happy birthday, Ro. Yeah. Thank you. Leave that in the comments if you watch this close to the <laughs> <laughs> to the posting. Birthday, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not quite. It won't land quite on your birthday. It would have had we kept our original schedule, but we've switched to Friday, so it's a little off. But this is your week. Um, why don't you tell us why you picked September's of Shiraz and uh, kick us off with this. Yep. Okay. Well, did you hear the my ice? I did. That was rude. Okay. <laughs> I picked Sh- Se- I picked September's of Shiraz because I am of Persian descent and my mother uh, immigrated here during the Iranian Revolution as well as Puya's family and Puya. He was alive during that time. And I just want to talk more about like my heritage and I would love to change the narrative and what Hollywood brings out for films yeah, yeah depicting us. Um, all right, to get into this, this is a thriller, and it is about a Jewish family who had to abandon everything uh, during the revolution. Uh, a well-to-do Jewish family, I should yeah. add. Yeah. Uh, he plays a jeweler, it, so he's like a diamond cutter. Yes. Well, yes, which I think is a bit uh, stereotype. <laughs> it's just based on a on a autobiography, though, is it not? Right. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's true. But it's like, oh, stereotype character. Let's do this. I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's like we're all engineers or professors or doctors or you know. So, anyways. Um, and it takes place prior to the revolution and it's directed by Wayne Blair, who is an Australian director, which we will get into a, uh, um, adapted screenplay by Hannah Wegg. And it is based on the novel by Dahlia Sofer. And the novel is also called September's of Shiraz. It is starring Selma Hayek, Adrian Brody from the pianist, if you happen to not know who he is is and Shore Agdalushu, who is a probably I would say the most prominent Iranian American actor today. Um, she has a lot of credits even today in the modern she's great world. She's great. I love her. She's my favorite actress. And actually so was Salma. Um, I'm going to do something a bit different than what we usually do today. And I just kind of want to contrast a couple of reviews. Um, one comes from Roger Ebert's website, so that's a pretty significant review. And he basically calls this film myopic. Um, he says that this film and a lot of films in particular that try to depict the Iranian Revolution and its aftermath just fail completely. Um, I do agree to a sense. It is a very complex situation, and it's unless you lived it thoroughly, it's hard to depict, right? Um, He said the closest film that's ever done so is Argo. And that is because the prologue made a good stab at providing historical context to the film. The worst one to do so was Not Without My Daughter, starring Sally Field. We'll just leave that there. Um, (laughs) I'm unfamiliar with that one. I'll have to look it up later. (laughs) Uh, Do it while you're folding laundry. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the review was 
the other review that is in contrast to this was written by an Iranian film watcher um, on IMDb. And he said that it depicts his experience to a sense. He said his wasn't as uh, severe, but he says he knows people were was as severe. And he feels that it this film did that justice. Um, one of the critiques on Iranian film in general is that it's filled with a lot of propaganda. And he said that this film did not do so, where Ebert disagrees. Uh, you know, take that from you, Will. Um, he goes on to say that the behaviors from these guards were normal. And today, Iranians, by some extent, live in a fascist religious ideologue. And another review I thought was just funny. The title was Studio 54 in Iran. And uh, <laughs> it, the opening, you see that, no? Yeah, just for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just for a little bit. It it kind of comes off like it's going to be a bit happier than the film actually is. Yeah. I saw um, those, those Saturday Night Live or Saturday Night Fever moves going on. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And I love oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I was saying that was pretty funny. That was that was actually a fun moment in the film when I watched it and it just opened on that. And it was like really loud and I had to turn the volume down. And I was like, well, oh, okay, this is awesome. Me too. Yeah. And then it took a dark turn. Yeah. Uh, Puya, what did you think? What was your first initial reaction to this? Uh, well, my initial reaction was, why are Adrian Brody and Salma Hayek playing Iranians in this film about the revolution? So, you know, immediately I went into it, um, you know, I think you mentioned this too, but went into it judging. Um, but I was, I was pleasantly surprised by Adrian Brody's performance. Um, I really think he did his homework as far as like the mannerisms, accents, things like that go. So um, I appreciated that. But uh, I was I was just set up um, to really judge this film probably harder than I should have. But um, I, I, I really didn't appreciate this film all too much. I can see why I'll say that. Um, I do just want to... Give a shout out to Adrian Brody. He is known for doing tons of research and basically mm -hmm. nailing. He has one role. of the most eclectic careers in Hollywood. Like yeah. he's done like crazy action films. He's done like stuff like The Pianist. He does like these weird quirky comedy, like just kind of anything you can think of. He's he's tried. He's tried to get in it. Yep, it's true. Uh, John, what did you think initially? Um, yeah, I was, I was underwhelmed by this film. Uh, there's just, I feel like it lacks, um, like even when you get, I was also kind of with you guys where when I first saw the, the poster for this film, I was like, wait, what? Like, I thought it was going to be about Americans. I thought it was going to be like Argo, like where there were Americans stuck in, uh, Iran and then they were playing Irani. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting um yeah adrian brody uh at the very least is jewish and the character is jewish uh but he is yeah not even close to middle eastern <laughs> um he's polish yeah so yeah he's he's pretty he's pretty pale he's of the of the, the paler side i but, would love to have seen a portion of this film sorry i didn't mean to cut you out john but i would have really loved to have seen a portion of this film actually in farsi for a period of time that like maybe you know the first um uh maybe the first 15 minutes of the film i think if that was in farsi i think it would have had a much much greater impact and you know, with subtitles i found myself wondering if there are it's a little bit of a tangent but i want to ask you guys are there multiple languages spoken in yes. tehran of course yes okay what what are the other languages Dialects. yeah I mean, Farsi is a national language, obviously, but we have a lot of a lot of Azerbaijani immigrants, and although they speak Farsi, they also speak their native language. Um, Arabic is infiltrated a lot, and there's just multiple dialects. It's a very diverse country, and I think that that's another thing that films don't shed light on. I asked because I watched it with subtitles, and 
uh, throughout the film, it's got the interrogators and the guards people, and it says speaking Farsi. And so, and, and it's almost as though Adrian Brody's character doesn't speak Farsi. Like, that's kind of like what it felt like when, like, his oh, interrogators are having these sort of in-language conversations off to the side, but everything we're doing is in English, and he never says anything Farsi. It confused me, actually. So that's he did, kind of why He did say one thing in Farsi. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's like a greeting or something, right? No, he says um, when he's convincing his captive captor to let him go, he he quotes the Quran. Oh, and he does that in Farsi. Got it. Yeah. Um, you know, I put that. Could you hear that clearly? Because I put that. I re, I tried to watch that a couple of times to see if I could figure out what he said, and I could not figure it out. Oh, I I should have written it down. I figured it out. Um, could you tell by what he was speaking? No. Oh, do they yeah. not translate it in the regular? They do. There they is do, a yeah. yeah. yeah there is subtitle. But, yeah. Yeah, there is a little subtitle, but honestly, it was really small. Yeah. And, it's about uh, yeah. It's about business. It's about acquiring goods and not make yeah. that not making you a better person. Essentially. Okay. Yes. It's yes, much more poetic was. than that, but. Yeah, <laughs> much more. Um, actually, that while we're talking about this, that was my very first note. Not in Farsi. Thumbs down. <laughs> And I'm just going to yeah. leave that about the language there. Um, yeah. um, Adrian Brody's accent was pretty good, I'm going to mm -hmm. say. Uh, my mother actually thought he was Iranian, which I thought was interesting. Um, I was like, good. no, <laughs> he's not. Yeah. Um, what did you think of that? his accent, Puria? I thought, I thought he did a great job. I really thought he did his research and he, I was really, he opened his mouth and I was immediately impressed by the accent, you know? Yeah. Um, he's kind of an even, actor's even actor. Sort of right? I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just saying, he's kind of an actor's actor. Like he does the work, he always does. He always kind of brings his A game, even to like projects where you would think that like you could phone it in. He never seems to do that. He always kind of puts in that extra. Yeah, Intel definitely. And and it was very evident because even even some of the mannerisms he used were i mean very it could have been somebody you know right from the homeland like doing those things like even at the end when he was uh he he was smacking that little the, the kid around the uh, the habibis child who was trying to extort all kinds of things from him get the diamonds like the way he was speaking to it with his open hand and just like the intensity that he was doing i was like wow that's that's like what we do that is what we. If did. I was smacking somebody around, my hand would be like this, because I think my grandfather's hand would be like this. His father's hand, you know. Yes. Yes. That's um, good to hear. One <laughs> thing that didn't come across well was Salma's accent. Love you, girl, but I felt like I was watching Frida in a Chador. That's funny. Um, to uh, to kind of wrap uh, up what I was saying about my initial. Uh, feeling was that I feel like this um, was it lacked a strong direction like it was competent it was nothing I feel like technically glaring where I was like that's just bad filmmaking but I don't really think it was uh, it didn't have any kind of pizzazz to it like mm -hmm. I felt like we've been spoiled with our, our our list of films that we've done for the show up to this point because even some of the movies I, I haven't liked so much like Creed and Mulan do have this kind of visual flair to them at least you know even if like there's other areas I didn't like whereas this one very standard shots like nothing technically impressive about them and like I felt like just the film lacked tension and it lacked kind of a drive forward like it just kind of like is there and I felt very uh kind of meh about it overall like there are there are moments in the film that are good but yeah just in general i just felt like this was very kind of blah it was i, of I have to agree with you i was i was i was looking out for some you know some good filmmaking some great shots some different things and there just was it was very predictable and very even down to you know when uh when they were running or something intense was happening when they were walking him out you know to that uh firing line 
And you can just predict, you know, somebody's going to be holding the camera to give that jarring effect of like, oh, you know, disorient you a bit and just um, like something bad is going to happen. The camera starts shaking. And, yeah, it was a and, little bit filmed by numbers, right? It yeah. was kind of like, yeah. and uh, I think maybe a little later I'll address some other things. But there was even elements I felt like that were just kind of missing that should have been there if you were doing like the proper film by numbers uh whereas like this one just kind of like yeah it does an adequate job but but there is a lot of context missing from the film i think yeah oh tons tons of historical context and you know i tried to justify it by saying this is a film about a family and their struggles but like how can you understand it if you don't have a historical context and as ebert said films depicting this time fall flat except for argo who did their best but it could have been done better right um but good on you ben Affleck. thank you um with that said before we get into the spoilers we are going to kind of talk about a quick historical context i'm going to do my best to do it in an unbiased way um please understand that I live in the States and this is going to be hard for me to find this information. Um, I did talk to my mother and some other Iranians and just tried my best to look at both sides. Um, so don't come for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't at right. me, bro. Don't at me, bro. So my mother did say that the beginning and just, not the beginning, but them showing the protests and stuff like that was a perfect depiction. But she said, again, it lacked complete historical context context and she said that any non-Iranian watching this would have no freaking idea what was going on <laughs> prior, right? And they have nothing to connect it to. Um, so real quick, the Shah had actually fled before. He lived in Rome, came back upon the request basically of the population. Um, Nixon then started selling American military equipment in hopes of controlling the spread of the Soviet Union and he placed this upon the Shah and Iran. Um, then the Shah began pursuing making Iran a superpower and invited other Middle Eastern countries, specifically Saudi Arabia, um, in uh, trying to keep the resources within their region and cutting output. So his goal by doing this was to modernize the country in one generation. This then led to oil prices skyrocketing um, by like at least 50%, I believe. Um, and no, I'm sorry five times oil prices skyrocketed five times and then because of that the gmp in iran expanded to an unsustainable rate of 50 percent um due to all this all the commodities in iran began to sky rise and or i'm sorry skyrocket yeah yeah skyrocket mm -hmm. skyrocket <laughs> leave that little snafu in there though um and because of this uh the increased awareness of the middle class that the Shah had enabled through education and, you know, expanding the economy, started demanding more freedom from the regime, or I should say the monarchy, excuse me. Um, this led to multiple assassination, assassination attempts for the Shah, and he began to not trust people and arresting people that were loyal to him. Um, due to the lack of infrastructure, mismanagement, and corruption, the Shah's plan came to a pretty much immediate halt. And this caused the monarchy to lose support rapidly. Um, Jimmy Carter then became president and he started putting pressure on the Shah to improve human rights. Uh, opposing groups took this as a sign to step up and put the pressure on the mar monarchy. And this empowered Ayatollah Khomeini, who was exiled in France to uh, return and continue his religious journey in trying to bring Iran under that rule. Uh, cue more strikes and riots in Iran. Um, again, the Shah continues to arrest and imprison not only Ayatollah Khomeini's leader or followers now, but also people that were loyal to him. Obviously, this is very confusing to the population, right? I would have no idea what to think, personally. Um, then, through all of this, the Shah was then exiled and died 19 months after exile. And... Um, the history research that I've done leads me to believe that a lot of these issues were actually because he died of cancer and he kept his sickness very secretive. 
there is a very good documentary on Amazon Prime called The Death of the Shah, which I believe does a pretty decent historical context on what was happening in Iran prior to it getting into his medical issues and how that affected the country. We're going to write that below for you. And I'm also going to link a couple other videos that will tell you a bit more about what was going on. Um, all right. Full spoilers from here. Let's yeah. get into it, guys. Uh, it's great, man. Cursed with oil, right? Yeah. <laughs> or cursed mm -hmm. uh, with the most coveted thing on the planet. Uh, it's crazy to think that the Ayatollah is still in power, too. Like, Well, now it's his son. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is he still alive, though, right? He didn't die or anything, did he? I, I believe he died. Was... Did he? Oh, he I died. Feel like... Oh, he died. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, he died. Oh, yeah. I missed that. I remember when... There was like, an, yeah, the last time I heard news about him, there was like an election going on and it was like, you know, the Ayatollah just picks. <laughs> it's like the, the people don't pick. The, the Ayatollah picks. Um, you want to talk about not having voting power? Look to Iran, America. Anyways. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and we, I, it's tough with Iran because it's it's always painted as like, the scary country right and we villainize it a lot here um you know the whole thing with the nuclear the nuclear deal and whatnot mm -hmm. that obama tried to get in and that trump is now undone and and you know they like the regime is is a scary one i think uh any anytime you get kind of fundamentalism i think it gets it gets scary and like my my most my big introduction to this is through the comic Persepolis, where which is highly recommended. It's so good, and it's about living through this and like kind of going from having a lot of freedoms to suddenly being very restricted. And it's from a woman's point of view, and of course they're much more restricted. Uh, so, yeah, no, that's kind of where I get a lot of my context. Uh, you know, I don't want to pretend to I, be an expert or anything. I feel like that's a good place to get context, though. Uh, Puya, are you familiar with Persepolis? Uh, I'm not. Okay. Uh, I'm sending you a, her books. <laughs> and I, I know her film is available to stream. I'm not sure what platform. I'll let you know where that is, too. It's a okay. beautiful story. Cool. Let's have to check it out. All right. So let's get into production. I don't have much to say about this other than I was underwhelmed with the cinematography. Uh, but I would like you guys who seem to have very strong opinions kind of run this show. So, uh, we're yeah. talking production value? Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, sets, I mean, I like the house. It was a nice house. The house was nice. Yeah. The house was very nice. Um, this was shot in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. um, I think they made it, you know, as real as they possibly could. There was some, I think they, they put some aerial shots of Iran in there. Um, yeah, like it opens with a shot of like the city under the mountain. And there's like a few yeah. kind of. Other than that, I, I mean, I didn't notice anything that would have, you know, set it anywhere other than. You know, there was like the interrogation room and then there was, you know, the areas where they were shooting people. And, and what else did we have? Yeah, from uh, a production standpoint, yeah. I feel like this movie is very competent, right? Costumes look pretty yeah. good. Like immersion is fairly good for the time period. It feels, you know, like I obviously I said I'm not an expert, so I can't like pick out things that are historically inaccurate all over the place. But you know, cars look good, clothes look good. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, I felt like it was well produced. Like the sets look pretty good. Um, you mentioned camera work. I think I'd rather talk about that when we go to directing, though. Okay. Um, I just want to kind of throw some context on you can't film this in Iran. Right. It's not like it would be a simple feat for them to be able to do that. Right. So Bulgaria was the best choice. Maybe not the right choice, but the best choice for them. You work with what you got. One thing that I did greatly appreciate was that Honda motorcycle that they got on and rode Adrian Brody away. Yeah. Which 
which I thought was pretty cool that the three of them could ride on that thing. But that thing was just beautiful. I just thought I'd throw that. It's it, like an old Honda CB. Yeah, it was awesome. It was pretty. I love the cars in general in this, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> the three of them on the motorcycle reminded me of the time I spent in India, where you see like whole families on mopeds and that sort yeah. of thing, where like you never see one person on a motorcycle in, in, yeah. in Mumbai. It reminded me of that. Uh, yeah, production was fine. Um, uh, I'm with you on cinematography, if we want to just go there. Yeah, let's uh, just get it. Yeah, I'm with you. Very standard shots. Uh, mm -hmm. Not, you know, whatever they shot on, it just looked very flat for the most part. Like, not a lot of depth of field to the shots. Not a lot of interesting camera work. Uh, and I even felt like shots were missing. Like, like there's a scene uh since we're we're in spoilers where uh habibi's son are you know our sort of antagonist our secondary antagonist in the film uh he gets kind of a comeuppance at the end right like he he hands in evidence against adrian brody in spite of everybody being like why the hell would you do that this guy's been nothing but nice to you for your entire life yeah, right <laughs> uh, right Right. Uh, and and the guy is like, all right, cool. I'll pass this up to the authorities. Oh, and you're under arrest. And it doesn't cut to a reaction. I was shocked. I was like, it, it cuts from it's like a wide. We're facing the official and his the, the character's back is to us as the line is delivered. And then it just cuts away. And I was just like, we don't even get that actor doesn't even like get to have a moment of like this is like what actors act for it's like right. you know his yeah. whole world is changing and it's like oh no my this is his comeuppance you know like all of all of his selfishness is kind of being served right back at him and mm -hmm. and we don't get to see it so i felt like there was things like that in the movie where i just like i couldn't really understand what the logic was behind the shots it felt very just like Let's shoot it wide. Let's shoot it close. Maybe we're rushed for time. I, I don't know, but like, yeah, I'm really with you on the cinematography and the shots. The the direction of the shots in general was just lacking. Uh, it was lacking direction. You know, yeah. it was lacking real thought in why the shots were doing. Like the most interesting shot in the film is the opening when they go through the house at the party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Like, I, I, I was, totally. Yeah, outside of that, nothing really stands out as, like, interesting or particularly, like, stand out. Like, even when they do the car accident shot, it's very kind of like, you know, there's this weird close-up on him where he's like, I won't go back to jail. And then they they do the stunt. And it's just kind of mm -hmm. like, all right, and now we're done. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I never, I never felt the tension from from the from a visual standpoint i feel like there wasn't a lot going on in terms of like representation of point of view or power dynamic or anything like that like when they have the confrontation on the stairs you know it's like it's all shot from you know a handheld guy just standing on the steps beneath them and it was just so strange to me that they wouldn't put a little bit more effort kind of into that I completely agree with you. Most of it was standard, as you mentioned, and uh, it just kind of fell flat and kind of boring visually. Like it just wasn't there wasn't there wasn't much there for me to hold my interest. Yeah, like, I expected much more from the opening shot, mm -hmm. like because they gave us that. I was like, this is going to be amazing, and then wah wah wah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, like they kind of were. It's like you can put Selma Hayek or Adrian Brody or uh, what's her name, Shira. Um, Shoday. 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 Uh, you can put them in a close up and like they'll do most of the work for you you know because mm -hmm. they're good but I feel like the 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 protection wasn't supporting them you know it was leaning on them it was just like you're gonna do all of our heavy lifting and they should really be working in tandem I, you know yeah. my, my view amen <laughs> All right. Oh, go ahead, Puria. Oh no, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. That was that was well put. They should be working in tandem. 
not yeah. one relying on the other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Exactly. All right. Let's get into casting. We kind of touched on this before. So. <sighs> <laughs> Why yeah. can we never be casted within our own ethnicity? Mm. Yeah. And yeah, what's really odd about not like on one level, um, there's the bankability argument mm. of, you know, we, we can put Adrian Brody and Selma Hayek and people know their names and there's more likely that this will get distribution, et cetera, et cetera. But on the other hand, like this movie's not informative to a wide audience it expects you to kind of know what's going on. And if that's the case, then it feels like Persians are your target audience. And maybe you should then cast Persian actors. What a concept. <laughs> right. Huh. Yeah. So I was and there's no shortage. Of, I've seen some amazing actors out there that are Persian. They yeah. just do a phenomenal job. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I think, uh, did we, did we, talk about this i i think that uh uh this film would have had a lot more impact if a good portion of it was in farsi uh to begin with and there are a lot of iranian actors that could have carried this film very very well but uh, if you know it's uh the audience that you're after then uh obviously you need some names to you know capture the attention and have people watch this maybe if this had come after parasite they would have been fine putting subtitles on it or something but no good point yeah <laughs> also you know you've, you're casting american actors who clearly don't speak farsi i'm guessing yeah. that adrian Brody and Selma Hayek don't know farsi i could be wrong but my... well i have to say really for, first of all the lack of farsi really uh i'm gonna go with offended me and the only people we hear speaking farsi are the guards and most of the words that they say is bia bia right it's like go go so like there, we don't get to hear our beautiful language. And another thing that I want to bring up, and Puya, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I grew up on the U.S.-Mexican border. So I heard Farsi and Spanish growing up. And a lot of people that speak Spanish have no problem pronouncing our words. So it was very disappointing that Salma, who is Mexican, mm -hmm. did not take the initiative to learn Farsi. Hold I'm on. sorry about that, guys. Did I disappear on you? You did for just a hot second. Okay. Uh, should I retake that? Super popular. Um, yeah, too. just back it up a little bit so that I can... Okay. Um, so my initial reaction was, I mean, like, within a second, although I wasn't <laughs> expecting it to be in Farsi, was that this film was not in Farsi. Um, I want to add, Puya, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I grew up on the U.S.-Mexico border. So mm -hmm. I grew up hearing Spanish and Farsi throughout my entire life. And because of that, I would, you know, talk to my friends that speak Spanish and we would exchange words and they were able to pronounce Farsi words impeccably. Like the first try mm -hmm. was pretty amazing. And because of this, Salma being a Mexican actress, I'm very disappointed that she did not take the initiative to learn Farsi. I agree with you. I I think that there's definitely things that she could have enunciated, pronounced better accent. That, you know, if she had perhaps maybe studied a little bit more. Um, I don't know, but it her 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 performances took me out of the film a lot of the times as I was watching, and um, yeah. So I'd have to I'd have to agree with you. I I think she could have done a much better job. And she carries a big chunk of this film too. She does, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I know you're a fan. I just didn't really appreciate her acting in general in this film. I, I think it could have been I mean there was there was a lot about it that just fell really just wasn't didn't feel committed enough. Yeah, I, I agree. I love me. her. I love her. She's yeah. one of my favorite She's actresses. Great. And I, I didn't believe her. I mean, there were there was portion. I mean, just to you know, since we we're talking about her and some of her performance, there was a, um, a couple of scenes where she hadn't seen her husband, didn't even know if he was dead or alive. Like you know, the, the person that's basically created this life for them, and it didn't feel like she was that concerned about. It. And then he shows up at the door, 
She's very calm, And she was right? like in disbelief at first, but then just kind of slowly opens the door and is like looking at him. I'm like, dude, if that was like my mom and dad or somebody that I, you know, my like my best friend in the world that I didn't know if they were alive or dead, like I would be so all over them, not just, you know, I'd be in disbelief, but then I open that door and I just yeah, be yeah, completely like all over them. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. Wait, you realize this is your husband that you weren't sure if he was dead or alive. Like it just, I don't know. Some of the, some of the performance was yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of a weird thing. I mean, I did, I, I do think some of the better scenes were when is when she tries to confront people about what's going on. Um, I agree. Yeah. Like, um, she's her, a strong Yeah. Like woman. her oh. and, and, and her baby, Sharia, uh, like their scene in the kitchen is probably my favorite scene in the film where where she confronts her and she finally kind of says the right thing. Um, that is something I liked about this film, just to not not completely trash it. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the things I liked about this film was the way that her character was written in the sense that like she's kind of got foot and mouth disease. Like she always kind of says the wrong thing, even right. though you want her like her like she has a perfectly valid stance like her husband's been arrested for no goddamn reason and everybody's trying to like justify it around her and and i and so i did like that she kind of there was this element to her character where like she just keeps saying the wrong things she calls them gypsies you know she does the thing where she's like correcting the maid or saying you don't know what you're talking about and like getting called out for it um so I, that was something I appreciated that like she was kind of in this place of of privilege where she hadn't checked her privilege. You know, she was kind of just used to it. Like, this is just the way it is. Why is suddenly everybody, you know, doing things wrong? So that was something uh, on the positive side. And I do think her scene with Sharia is one of the better scenes. And it was finally it was like finally she brings up the thing, the, the point where. You know, she's like, 20 years ago when we hired you, where were you? You know, like, we didn't have to do anything <laughs> for you. Um, and and so that was, an, you know, it was a, I think for me, the moment where I felt the most, because I was like, finally, you like, got got it out right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I'm with you that like, a lot of, outside of those couple of scenes, she's very, like, underplaying it almost yeah. right that was also my but... favorite scene uh and one thing that was really powerful to me is i couldn't pick a side during that scene you know yeah. uh like i understood both points yeah. Habib been... has a strong argument like she has a very yeah. strong case to make yeah. like that things aren't quite right and they're not quite equal but it's also like yeah but maybe this isn't the best way to solve them yep Okay, so we already said we love Adrian Brody. I think his performance was in direct contrast to her in the sense that we could, I could tell, and I'm sure you guys could, that like we said, he does his historical research. He looks at the mannerisms. He nailed the accent. And it's obvious he put in the work. Mm -hmm. It's obvious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it always is with him. Um, who's the actor that is his interrogator? Because he was also good. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. he was. Really yeah, and mm -hmm. the scenes that they have together, um, you know, the one where, you're, like, near the end where he takes off his mask and they have uh, the conversation and he quotes the Quran to him and all that. That's a good scene. That is a know? good scene. Um, that actor's name is Nasir Mem Arzia. Yeah, he's, yeah, he was good. He had a presence that I felt yeah. like was, was appropriate to his character. Um, you know, I didn't necessarily care for the way they did the ending with him where like you know like we get what's happening because we you know we can put two and two together based on their conversation but like i felt like they didn't give us much in the way of like either but catharsis or like a nice reveal like there was just kind of something lacking about the way that he let them go at the end yeah I agree. I mean, the second he was looking at that letter, I was like, he's going to burn it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why he smokes. <laughs> and that's what happened. Yeah. Like if you compare <laughs> this to like Argo, for example, since it is a similar story, it's about the same situation and like getting people out of 
Iran, which this movie tells you that's what the movie's about, but it's only like the last 10 minutes are about that. Uh, but in that movie, they like maybe go a little overboard with building the tension in the escape. This one goes in the absolute opposite direction where they just underplay the tension somehow like in a way where i was just kind of like why why is it why is it lacking tension so much and i think that it's you know it's just kind of a lack of attention to detail on on the yeah you know production <clears throat> side yeah um another performance that i thought i don't know how i feel about this yet but was mortez's the character, um, the one that he has the confrontation with in the stairwell in his mm -hmm. place of business, that actor's name is Navid Navid, and he is Iranian, which I appreciate. Um, I didn't care for his accent, but as, I mean, he's Iranian, but that <laughs> is due, <laughs> due to the fact that he speaks three languages, German, English, and Farsi. And he left Iran when he was like three or four. Mm -hmm. And uh, you left when you were six, Pudia, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not knowing yep. a stitch of english and right. your accent is undetectable right like, there is no accent yeah. um at least per farsi accent um but one thing i found kind of cute was that his accent sounds exactly like my cousins who speaks the same three languages oh that's great that's, that's awesome that's an yeah. interesting spread of languages english german and farsi yeah like, you can you can go pretty far with those three languages actually like there's a lot of places you can you can make work with that oh yeah um his actual portrayal of this character i was i guess lukewarm i don't know how much of that was due to the accent and uh due to it just kind of reminding me of my cousin i don't know um i mean i hated him but you're supposed to and i I wasn't sure if I was supposed to believe him when he was supposed to be loyal, you know? Uh, I kind of just didn't know what to do with him. I, I wanted you know? more motive from him. Yeah. Because, like Adrian Brody tells me, he's like, I raised you. And it's like, I wish we'd seen maybe a little bit of his indoctrination. Because we get it from his mother that he's joined the guard, you know, that he's got some compelling arguments but we never get it from him. And I feel like that would have been useful, especially since he is almost our main antagonist. There's kind of like the interrogator and him are like the two antagonistic characters in this film. And yeah, it just seemed like, why? I kept being like, why? I, yeah. I want to, I just like, give me a little bit of insight. I'm sure there's a reason, but you're not showing us like, and it, I think maybe giving us a little bit more of him and it's hard. I, you know, I haven't read the book. I don't know how much the author knew about this character even, you know, but it seemed like just from a film point that we could have had a little bit more. I'm going to yeah, guess it's, hear. I'm going to guess it's uh Farnaz who wrote the, who wrote the book? Um, nope. Uh, Dahlia Sofer. So who is she? Who is she? Is she the little girl? Perhaps. Yeah, because it says it's based on a true story. Yeah. Uh, so I assumed it was a autobiography, but I might, I might be. Well, I if wrong this is true, I don't understand why they would change the little girl's name in the film. Her name is Shireen. Yeah. So I nobody would... has that name. So yeah, maybe it's not yeah. biograph. Maybe it's not autobiographical. Maybe it's just she found somebody's yeah. story. Perhaps. Uh, Puria, what did you think of Navid Navid? Um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. His character was very underdeveloped. Like, you didn't understand. He was just this little punk kid who was just, you know, doing this stuff. But you didn't really understand why. Like, what what caused him to want to be in such great opposition to do these heinous things to the families that, you know, to the family that's taken his mother in and, and himself, giving him a job, giving him a life. I right. mean, what would cause him to turn? Like, what was there something that someone said to him to, to make him think down a certain line but then again the whole film was pushing two hours so maybe they just didn't have time for that kind of stuff no. i don't know perhaps i mean will we ever know who knows yeah uh yeah, yeah I, I he, oh sorry I, I was just gonna say he even turns on his mother which as an iranian my mom would beat my ass oh, yes. which, she, which she does 
Right. <laughs> she is like, get out before I kill you. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, just the audacity of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about the, I felt like that was actually uh, something that they could have, again, like dug deeper into that, like, you talk about him being underdeveloped, like the guard would be putting a misogynistic rhetoric into his head that like men, because that is how it is over there. Men have the power in, in a very extreme manner and, you know, women have a place. And so like, I could, I can understand he, he's eating up this, this doctrine and he's kind of like, now he's like even putting it to his mother I, I like I kind of understood where that was going from, but I think again, without getting some of his character and some of that indoctrination from his perspective, it really winds up lacking meat. You know, it falls flat. It leaves us without the context that we need. Like it just it asks a lot of the viewer. It's like, please fill in all the blanks, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give you a lot of blanks to yeah. fill in. You know, fill the, fill in the blanks and do your own research. Yeah. <laughs> Um, those were the castings that I wanted to touch on. Do you guys have anything additional? No. Um, hmm. Yeah, I feel like well, yeah, most of my gripes are all just kind of story related at this point. Acting was fairly decent. There aren't too many more characters in that though, right? There's like not the really brother, not, none that, some yeah. side characters. Yeah, none that I feel are worthy of talking about. Not that it yeah. was a bad performance, but yeah. you know they're there to kind of help. Move it along. Yeah, they yeah they just kind of plot like the guy who they they ask if 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 Selma Hayek's character knows this man like yeah, he was yeah. he was featured but he didn't really do anything. What were you gonna say about him? I, I was gonna say was there a purpose to his character at all? It was just just for her to deny knowing. Did, did we ever figure out who that guy was? Was it his friend? Yeah, it was a friend of his who worked for the Shah. So it was just a connection to the Shah. Like they were just trying to tie him direct, like Adrian's Brody, they were trying to tie him directly to the monarchy the whole time. Mm. And they just couldn't seem to do it. Even though like when they're in the prison together, they recognize each other, you right. know? Um, but it seems like if, if his wife had recognized him, maybe would they have brought her in too? I, I'm not really sure. I don't really know why they didn't arrest her, to be perfectly honest. Um, Likewise. I was like, you are yeah. dumb going in there. You are dumb, dumb, dumb. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's over. I, I don't care who you got with you. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into the screenplay. Yeah. Clearly, we had issues with this. Um, but my biggest issue was a lot of the dialogue. I did find some of it poetic, which I thought paid a nice little homage to... Iranian poetry, and there's even some mm -hmm. references to Persian poets within it. However, uh, the poetry of it was always quotes, right? Whether it be from the Quran when he was trying to negotiate his release, or from these, from Rumi, or mm -hmm. other Persian poets. Um, my, I just felt like there was so much unnecessary things. One line that I did like that Salma delivered was, "You think you're a man of God." I mean, that's a kind of a corny line, but I, I did get chilled, you know, like, okay, she's strong, but she is a strong person outside of acting, right? So delivery, fine. Um, one thing that really bothered me was they're here to get us while the guard showed up. No <laughs> shit. He was suspenseful music. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know this this film, yeah. I I feel like a lot of the problems do kind of start here at the heart of the script, um, and for as long as the movie is, and you know, I, I kind of felt like we didn't go through much, and also I felt very unresolved. Like even at the end, like you know, they they cross the border, and then it just cuts, and I'm mm -hmm. like, what about their son? Like, what about, like, they, they have no money left. I guess she still has the the, the sapphire ring, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's like, okay, so he's literally lost every dime of his of his fortune. And then it just, like, draw, it just, like, cuts off. And I felt like, so I, 
I just kind of felt like kind of like with that scene I mentioned earlier where we don't get the actor's reaction. I felt like the end of the movie did that too, where like we don't really get a resolution. Yes, they get out of the country, but I have no idea what happened to them. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. You know. Again, it's left up to the viewers to just kind of fill in, you know, whatever you they'll, they'll figure it out, you know. Yeah. Um, I do think that uh how can I put this? Uh these type of experiences are traumatic and people from this time are still dealing with this trauma. And in fact, I have secondary trauma from my mother's experience. Um, so I do think that the screenplay was trying to impress that upon the viewers, but I think they failed. Yeah. I and mean... I think it could have, I think it could have been far more effective. If it was nuanced. Yeah, it it's it feels like it, it lacked empathy in, yeah. in a certain sense where it just was like here are some things that happened. Right. <laughs> uh, like, oh yeah. Yeah. As a person who did this pretty much mm -hmm. what do you think? Like was it <laughs> Was it this, I guess, candid? Oh, the guards are here. You know, I, I, you said earlier that it was a quick decision. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about the words that were said throughout the movie? Um, Should I ask that better? <laughs> but, yeah, would, would... Like, do ask you... that one more time. Okay, for example, when I, they're saying they're here to get us. Like, uh, like a little too expository, just pointing yeah. out, pointing yeah. out the fact where they could have just, um, you, you were saying the portions of the film with right. action rather than explaining what's happening. Cause you obviously get that. They could have, you know, explained right. some other things instead. Right. Um, you were saying that you came home from school one day and yeah. you just knew. Yeah. yeah. You want to, um, cause yeah. we, we talked a little bit about this, uh, before, we started, we went to air. Do you want to relate some of uh, just your experience? Maybe how this falls flat in comparison or, you know. Um, sure. Let's see. My, my story, just to sum it up real quick, is one day my, my father was military in the Shah's regime. And uh, I came home one day and just had a sense that things just were not right. And my parents basically told me that we were leaving. And uh, that we'd be going far away. And we left. We, uh, they took us to the border. We had uh, paid some people to help guide us across the border into a different country um, so that they wouldn't find my father. And so kind of a similar, similar story to what we watched um, in the film. Uh, but again, there was just a lot of quick movement there wasn't you know a lot of dialogue there wasn't a lot happening it was just very quiet and just let's yeah. let's get this done yeah, and you were but... saying the entire journey was pretty quiet like even your sister three and a half year old obviously it was. Have a lot to say. Yeah, she, and she was not a quiet child by any means um but you could just sense i mean the whole thing was very palpable you could just sense that there was something not quite right and we had to do this performance to make sure that we were safe as a family. And so she was the night that we crossed that border. Um, exceptionally quiet. So I guess in that like, sense, the kids in this film do a fairly real, or the, the little girl does a fairly realistic yeah. job. Cause she is like, just kind of a normal kid. But when things kind of start going down, she does get very kind of like, drawn in like she kind of loses her expression and she gets very mm -hmm. quiet and just like obedient in a way that sometimes kids can when they can sense danger and fear in the air yeah, yeah that part of it felt very real where she just realized that okay i just uh um you know kind of withdrew and just let just obeyed yeah what was taking place yeah because there's something if you like yeah as a kid if your parents are scared like you you know yeah. it 
like yeah it's just immediately it comes to you and it's like wait this isn't right you know mm-hmm. i'm the one who gets scared parents are the ones who make me feel better protect like, you it, right <laughs> it shouldn't yeah <clears throat> so that is it is very scary if your parents are scared absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. i did feel well, like the ending was rushed like the poster of this movie that makes it look like the whole movie is an escape like and they're like, running like they're yeah yeah, like it's this escape, like they're going to spend most of the time with the with the smugglers. And they, we spend the whole time in prison and with, you know, someone trying to kind of deal with the family affairs on the outside. And then when he does get out, it's like 10 more minutes and then the movie's over. It felt yeah. like, and, like. And then she rips off her chador as they walk into Turkey. <laughs> At the end. The end. Yeah little a little a little underwhelming this one uh it is nice to give us an opportunity to talk about some of the history but it would be nice if if it was a little better and i do wish i could see more media about iran <clears throat> that's not about this one specific event you know uh like i mentioned persepolis and like the whole thing is about this and like argo which one best picture is entirely about this and there's not a whole lot of other iranian based film there's what house of sand and fog right um i'm like at a loss to think of more and that's really a shame <laughs> like one of the only ones that i know that's not made in iran that was made filmed here that's actually in farsi is uh, based on a true story called the stoning of sorai i don't know if i mentioned that in the beginning um, I, I don't i don't think in this you... case. okay um that is the only one I know, and that's sad. That's sad. Yeah. You know? I got to look at it up. Um, you said it was really depressing, though, right? Really fucking depressing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's called The Stoning, so it's probably <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, really not an auspicious title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's wrap up. Uh, Puya, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it so much. Oh, thanks so much for having me. So much. Yeah. Especially uh, on your birthday month. <laughs> thank you thank you um where can the people find you if they would like to get on your socials and if you would like to talk about any of the short films or your recent uh lead detective role oh. <laughs> <laughs> well that information is all available on imdb so you could just uh research my name my name is poria rabar or uh, uh if you want to connect with me on social you can find me at poria one on insta as you kids are saying, um, or just on Facebook. And that's P-O-U-R-Y-A for our audio listeners. And if you type it in IMDb, he is the first one that comes up. I tried it already. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. You're the only poor you with a, you're the only poor you on IMDb with a headshot, apparently. Uh, Oh, well, go on with your bad self. (laughs) Cool. Check me out. Yes. I'm just impressed there's other poor with the same spelling on there. Well, I think that's pretty cool. It's a commonish name now. I know quite a few Puyas. Yeah. There are there are many of me on IMDb. There's like, oh yes, yeah. There's there's like twenty of us, and I think yeah. I think at least two of them are are me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had three at one point IMDb accounts, and I was able to consolidate two of them. Uh, but I think there's still some <laughs> separated. My name's just too common. I'm very yeah, yeah. It is. Sorry. Love you. It is. Yeah. John, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me at John in Paradox. Uh, that's J-O-N-O-H. Um, on Instagram is really where I do most of my posting. Follow the show uh, at Views and Paradox on Instagram. Uh, we put up posters for the upcoming films, let you know what's coming down the pike. Uh, I did want to say, because uh, it's something that like I really wanted to say that we just never got around to, that uh uh Shreya has the coolest voice ever i know I everyone love loves her, her voice, really voice. Yeah. yeah i didn't recognize her face but as soon as she started talking i was like i know that actress you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like i i kind of popped up and i was like oh yeah i know that voice very yeah very cool i she meant to very, mention that earlier she has a very distinct beautiful voice and uh i am on her fan page and like everybody every day tells you that <laughs> Yeah. And again, she we didn't actually mention her very much in the acting portion. And honestly, that's because I think she nailed it. She's good. So, yeah. 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 
Um, as far as me, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll link it below just because I don't like spelling it anymore. And with that said, we will bid you adieu. Yeah, until <laughs> next time, watch more movies. Pull office. Pull the office. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs>